Hi everyone, welcome to Welford Weaves. My name is Rachel. Thank you so much for joining me. You can find me pretty much, actually you can't find me everywhere because I'm not on Facebook um, and I'm not on some of the other uh, social media platforms. So I used to say you can find me pretty much everywhere, but you can't actually anymore. You can find me on uh, Instagram as Woolen Spinning and you can find me on Ravelry as Welford Pearls, which is sort of my original uh, name. This is a place that we come to a couple of times a month if, if I get a chance to talk about um, all things um, weaving. I keep some of this content off of the regular podcast, Wool and Spinning, so that we can focus on more spinning content. Uh, it, it, it ends up crowding it out because I find with weaving there's a lot of explaining that goes on and I have to help uh, people to understand and go into a little bit more detail and I love doing that so I want an opportunity to be able to do that. To that end, uh, I thought this week I would share with you a project that I've just started in the last couple of weeks. It's taken me about three weeks to get the warp wound. The reason is because I just have been doing it when I have an opportunity. So I'll weave, uh, I'll, I'll wind the warp of one color, 12 ends of that color, and that's kind of all I get done for that day. So it's taken a long time because I've needed to wind 30 different colors, and I'll tell you all about it in just a minute. So just hold your horses. And... Um, the it, it's just been a the epitome of slow cloth the reason why i'm working on this project is one of the requirements for the guild of canadian weavers basics portfolio that i'm putting together over the next few years is uh m's and o's let me just find it here so that i can quote it properly is an m's and o's baby blanket or stole uh, baby shawl, baby blanket, scarf, or stole using a four shaft draft of M's and O's. Use yarns in keeping with the design and the function of the article being woven. State the purpose of the article. Fringes or commercial bindings should not be used on a baby blanket. And include the threading, the tie up and treadling drafts and fill the full details in on the record card. So that's sort of the information that they give you. And they basically are giving you you know, creative license to do what you want. Uh, so what I thought was I've never woven M's and O's before. I would really like to understand the structure. Um, it is a unit weave and um, it's built in units. And that was something that I've been learning about with Overshot. And so these complex weaves are, they're fascinating. I love them. And it's an opportunity for me to work with, with something a little bit more than just uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It builds on a lot of the knowledge that I've already got about twills, which is really fun in the sense of like, you know, you're just building, it's building blocks, right? Um, you've got your plain weave information and then you build it on it with your twills and then you start to get into your blocks and profile drafts and, and this whole world of complex weaving starts to open up for you, which is amazing. So what I thought I would start off with, since I have not worked with this uh, particular draft and this particular pattern before, is I'm just going to weave some tea towels. The reason is because I have a lot of tubes of 2-8 cotton that need to be used up. I also have pro um, uh, gifts that I need to have woven by the end of June for teachers. So if they each get a tea towel, that's three that I need to have done by the end of June, and I can totally do that. So with spring break around the corner, I thought it was a great opportunity to get something warped, get it onto the jack and, and work on this over the next few few months, probably a couple of months, because uh, I'll need to be somewhat efficient with getting at least the first three or four off in a timely manner. So let's get on to a different uh, screen and I will show you uh, drawing the drawdown because I actually saved over my original drawdown and. I got it all printed, but I didn't actually get it. Uh, I didn't save it properly. So we're gonna draw the we're gonna do the drawdown, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about what M's and O's actually is, and I'm gonna sh show you what it looks like woven, and uh, and then we'll be done for today. So thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on the other side. I am working on recreating a draft that I had made in uh, Fiberworks quite a while ago and this is what it looks like and I had saved it and this is the traditional um, M's and O's that I had made in Fiberworks. I printed them off, I saved the files, I did all the things and then it got saved over top by accident. It was it was honestly a mistake and as soon as I did it I just 
couldn't believe it. So uh, I thought that I would share with you, I'm, I'm rebuilding it. So I thought that I would share with you uh, what I am doing and how I am doing it. So um, I am just going to go back to a different drawing mode. Um, this is the free version of Fiberworks. I actually need to upgrade and, and get into something where I'm uh, uh, paying for, for the software. Uh, I just honestly have not had time to look at what that looks like and, and what I want to invest in, uh, whether it's Fiberworks or one of the other ones. So this is our tie up over here for those who are not weavers, but are watching this out of curiosity. This is our tie up. So think of this as what's going on underneath your loom on your treadles. This is how you're going to tie them up. And these are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I have uh, I am going to be weaving this on a four shaft loom. So a four, I'm going to use four of my treadles. So my first treadle is going to be tied up one, two. My second treadle is going to be tied up three, four. My third treadle is going to be tied up one, three. And then my fourth treadle is going to be tied up two, four. So that's this part of the draft. That's this corner bit here. We are also making the assumption that I'm going to be weaving on a jack loom, a jack style loom. So that means that my threads are going to raise when I push on one of those treadles. If I was using a counterbalance loom, then we would assume that those threads, um, if it was a counterbalance tie up, we would assume instead that those threads would go down. And so that makes a difference in terms of how you read your drawdown, because if your threads are going up, then the dark parts of your draft are going to be evident in your, um, uh, in how you read your draft in terms of, you know, whether it's w which threads are active. So which threads are moving versus in a counterbalance, which threads are moving, it's going to be the opposite. So people will often say that they didn't realize that drawdowns were mostly in North America for jack looms where your active threads are lifting and that they've spent all this time weaving and all of their uh, pattern picks and all of their, their, their pieces that they wove were upside down. And that's because the active threads were going down because they were weaving on a counterbalance loom and they were literally weaving upside down. So just be aware that you need to know what the tie up is for and whether or not it's for a jack loom or for a counterbalance. It's very unusual that you would find a counter marsh tie up because in a counter marsh tie up, if you tie up one and two, you also have to tie up three and four. So um, the drawdowns tend to look a little bit different for a countermarsh because all of the threads are active. Some are lifting and some are lowering. So with a countermarsh, your, your shed is gonna go like this. Everything is gonna be active and is go going to move. So you need to know that. So in terms of what we are drawing here, um, I am going to start drawing what I'm going to be treadling. So I am going to treadle one, two, so treadle one, treadle two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm going to do that one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six times. And you get this gorgeous rib pattern. So this rib pattern is created by your threading. So up here is what's going to happen in your threading. So what's happening at in those, in those lovely um, heddles that are in the middle of your loom, this is how you're going to tie up. So you're gonna tie, you're go sorry, not tie up. This is how you're going to thread. You're gonna thread your first shaft with your first thread. You're gonna thread your second thread into your second shaft. And then your, first, your third thread is gonna go into your first shaft again. And then your second shaft is going to have the fourth thread threaded through it, but then you're going to go to an, another unit. So you're going to go to three, four, three, four, back to one, two, one, two, one, three, one, three. So these are units. Think of them like units or blocks. And that's what creates this amazing fabric. And when we treadle one, two, one, two, and we're raising threads one and two on three and four. So one, two lifts and then three, four lifts. We get this lovely rib pattern. But then in the center here, we get this, we get plain weave. We, ju we get, you know, um, um, just plain weave. So what would happen if we change this up? So now I've done my, my um, 12 picks of uh, one, two, one, two, one, two here. Um, and now if I go to three, four, 
notice how it changes and it reverses. So now we've got plain weave where we had rib and we've got rib where we had plain weave. And this all has to do with your threading and the fact that you've got um, um, these, different, these different units. One and two is a unit. Um, one and two is a unit, three and four is a unit, three and four is a unit, um, uh, changing places across your threading all the way across, creating these, these, this rib pattern on this plain weave pattern, which is really super cool. So I need six of these, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now one of the things about this software that's pretty cool is I can highlight all of this. I can copy it and I can paste. All right, so this is pretty, it's really pretty with the blue as your weft thread and your white as your warp. Um, it's really easy to read as well because you can see that your active threads here, you've got one and two lifting, one and two lift up here, and so therefore you've got white. Um, and then three and four up here, your units here, three, four, three, four are lowering because they're that's those aren't the threads that are lifting so now you've got a weft pick over top and that weft pick is going to float over four threads there and then you've got the opposite um, happening again so this is really easy to read you you know which threads are going to be active it's your white threads uh, in your picture and your weft is going to be uh, is going to move over top of those uh, threads that that are not active basically in this first line here is three and four but I'm not going to be weaving with just a white warp and a blue weft. Um, I had picked some really fun colors out of my stash just randomly. And um, so I am going to change, hang on, let me just uh, go back to, I'm going to change the colors so that it's a better representation of what I am creating. Um, and what I am doing. So these are not actually the colors that I have chosen, but there isn't really anything in this program without going in and fiddling around with colors that I have actually chosen. I've, I've chosen a more neutral palette for all of my colors, but this gives me an idea of what things might look like. So um, it gives me an idea from a distance as well. Um, what my uh, what the color combinations that I've chosen might look like. Um, I have a couple of uh, colors in my in my collection that are lighter. I've got some colors that are darker. I've I've created a, a real mishmash uh, just to use up honestly, just to use up some some old uh, yarns that I have partial partials of. So let's just finish off with some color here. I'll do a couple of more, a couple more, just because they're showing on the monitor for you guys. And uh, it's fun to do color, to be honest. That's a bit butter, more buttercream than what I've got for mine, um, but that's okay. So that is what my towels are going to look like. Now, because I have the free version, I am going to print screen so that I have this saved and I will deal with that later. So let's talk a little bit about what M's and O's are and I'll, we'll have a look at uh, what a traditional M's and O's sort of looks like. This is a little bit of a, a change up of M's and O's. I've added an extra piece of, um, I've added some ribbing I, and my, my, um, my plain weave sections are, I played with them a little bit to get this and uh, I really like the overall aesthetic of this and I'm going to be weaving at 18 ends per inch, 18 picks per inch. So that will give you kind of an idea of what I'm doing here. Um, I just realized I've got the wrong color here. So let me just fix that before I forget. And then that looks correct. Yeah, that looks good. So I will print screen again to save it copy and paste it into another piece of software so that I can save this as a JPEG. And uh, we'll, let's talk about M's and O's a little bit more. So this is from Marcy Petrini's website. These are all free to download and I just save them as uh, PDFs. 
um, and I find them really super helpful. I find I find that they are um, really, really great for understanding some of the drafts out there and understanding what the pictorial looks like as well as uh, what they are going to look like woven up. She's done all of this sampling. She's collected all of this um, information. I will link to it in the, in the uh, notes down below. So M's and O's is a unit or a grouped weave, but unlike the others, it doesn't produce lacy blocks. There are two blocks possible on four shafts. Each block uses all four shafts in different configurations, producing interlaced floats or plain weave as shown in the fabric below. So the plain weave are those little uh, squares that you see between the ribbing. Thus, there is no salvage threading to produce plain weave down the length of the fabric, nor is it possible to weave plain weave across the fabric. So you can't get any uh, plain weave that goes across the entire fabric and you don't use floating salvages. Uh, a pseudo blanket weave is instead used to as shown in the drawdown below. The cloth is similar on both sides, that is floats appear on the same block on both sides of the fabric and threads are pulled by the interlacements in the blocks and spread by the plain weave areas and this results in a look that gives the structure its name. The float areas form M's and the plain weave areas form O's and yes a bit of imagination is needed to see them. So you can see the draw down here you've got your unit your your units and your blocks one two one two three four three four one three one three two four two four and so on and then your threading goes. So what I did with mine if you would if you'll remember is I just added a third row of ribbing of that pseudo basket weave. Um, so in this uh, uh, drawdown, she's got two rows of ribbing, um, sort of that pseudo basket weave. And in mine, I added a third row. Um, and I just liked the aesthetic. I wanted to make my uh, plain weave squares a little bit bigger. Um, and so I did uh, 12 and 12, 12 ends for each. Um, instead here, she's got eight ends for each. One, two, one, two, three, four, three, four. Um, and so I just, I just widened mine to 12. So I'm doing 12 uh, ends of each color. And then when I go to weave, I'll do 12 picks of each color to get that balanced 50-50 cloth. And these are the colors that I've chosen. So like I said, very neutral, very understated, very quiet. I threw in some uh, uh, slightly brighter um, tealy green it's down there in the corner just a little bit I think it's like two or three stripes through the entire blanket I did throw in black I think I used it only once or twice in the warping and uh, I used the dark gray and the brown but overall the overall feel of the blankets is quite quite light and um, uh, kind of scrappy uh, sort of um, just a little bit random so I'm excited to get weaving these so the warp is done and I'm at the point now where I'm throwing the warp on the back of the loom and I'll start threading in the coming week. And uh, I hope that you'll come along with me on that journey over the coming weeks as I get going with these towels. The reason why I chose this, and I hope you'll come along with me in the coming weeks as I get going with this project. Thank you so much for joining me today on Welford Weaves. I hope that you learned something. I would love to hear from you and hear what you're working on. If you would like to comment below in the show, um, in the in the comments below, please please don't hesitate to do that. I would also love to hear from you what you would like to see and hear about and what your uh, aspirations with your own weaving is. Please take the time to let me know so that we can tailor this content to something that is useful and helpful for you. Until next time, happy weaving. Bye everyone.